Hi, it's Mark, AE2EA from the Antique Wireless Association. You know, everybody likes to believe that they're outstanding in their field, but today I am outstanding in my field next to my 630 meter transmitter. You know, a couple years ago, 630 meters was opened up to amateurs after not being available for close to a century. And when I decided to get on 630, mostly because it was, it was a historic band that amateurs used to use extensively before they realized that the shorter wavelengths were really better for their purposes. I looked around and figured out how could I get on 630. There's a complete lack of equipment built for amateurs. And I realized that one of the historic uses of 630 meters was aeronautical non-direction beacon transmitters. I set about looking for one and I found a airport in Georgia that was getting rid of their NDB. Now this was transmitting, I believe, on 274 kilohertz. Uh, this sort of airport navigation uh, was very popular back in the day, but now in the days of GPS, it's fallen into disfavor and a lot of airports are decommissioning their NDB transmitters. This is made by Southern Avionics Company. Uh, they were, and I guess still are, a principal manufacturer of NDBs. Um, it comes in two pieces. This side is the tuning unit. It's an auto tuner. And if you're on 630 meters, one of the big issues is that, uh, you know, ideally uh, a vertical antenna, which would be the desirable antenna to use on this frequency, would be a quarter wavelength long. Well, at 630 meters, there'd be a 500 foot tall antenna. And uh, with my resources, that's just not gonna happen. So what I've done is I'm just using the feed line for my 80 meter dipole, and I'm using it in a uh, old configuration known as a Marconi T. Uh, I'll give you a more detailed view of this later on. Uh, on the other side of uh, this tuning unit is the NDB transmitter. Now, I'm not using it in its original configuration. And originally, these transmitters set out a Morse code signal that you could use radio direction finding in your airplane to locate. Um, I decommissioned the code generation part of this, and I'm just using this as my power amplifier. Puts out about 25 watts. Uh, and I'll show you in the shack how I'm generating that 630 meter signal that I'm sending out here on a piece of coax and then boosting up to 25 watts through the auto tuner and into the antenna. So this is the auto tuner and this is really the crown jewel of this installation. Let's take a look inside. You know, because I don't have a quarter wavelength vertical, uh, which would be 500 feet tall, uh, I've got a piece of vertical uh, 450 ohm line twin lead that's about 43 feet long. Um, the result is I've got an extremely short bandwidth available to me uh, while the antenna is in tune. And in order to maintain a decent SWR, I mean, the wind blowing can screw this up. Uh, in order to maintain a decent SWR, um, you have to continually tune the antenna to accommodate for changing conditions. And that's the function of this auto tuner. Uh, this is a purely analog auto tuner. Uh, I have a sensor here, and this sensor measures uh, phase and magnitude. And internal in here is a motor-driven variometer. Uh, classic uh, low-frequency installation. And the variometer is at the bottom of this tuning coil. Now, this tuner is built to operate from, uh, I think, 180 uh, kilohertz uh, up until the low broadcast band, I think maybe around 600. So I don't have much inductance used, but it has a series of fixed inductances you can pick to do your coarse tuning. And then you do fine tuning by adjusting some taps at the bottom of the coil. And then the motor-driven variometer will actually tune uh, to get you a perfect uh, match or as good a match as possible. It also has a, uh, a tapped toroidal transformer and you can adjust the antenna resistance here and then like I say this would adjust 
uh, add, add or subtract inductance in order to keep the antenna in tune. On the opposite side of the board from the auto tuner is the non-directional beacon transmitter. Uh, as I mentioned, I've taken out all of the code generation capability and I'm just using this as a power amplifier. So let's take a look inside. Pretty basic. This uh, is a classic uh, 1970s design, probably. Uh, very simple, very basic, looks very industrial. Um, I have a power supply in the middle. Um, at the top here, I have what was the code generation equipment. Now I'm just using that as the preamplifier. And in the bottom here, I've got the, uh, uh, the PA circuitry. Uh, and then there's some metering circuitry on the bottom. Not a lot to it. Uh, I have a low-level signal coming into it. Uh, the signal coming in here is probably only in the order of maybe 10 milliwatts. Uh, and then just the uh, power equipment and uh, cable coming back. This is a power cable to the auto tuner. And I've got the RF cable that goes to the tuner. So here's how the station looks from a distance. I've got the uh, transmitter and auto tuner at the base. Uh, below that, I have 12 75-foot radials uh, sitting on the ground. And this is fairly wet ground at this location. And then leaving the transmitter, I've got my 450-ohm line. And I have both conductors connected together on that to uh, give me essentially a single conductor. Uh, that goes up about 43 feet and connects to my 80-meter dipole. And the dipole itself is just serving as a capacitance hat on top of this antenna. That allows for additional current to flow near the top of the antenna. And that allows me to get a better radiation off this short vertical than I would normally have. So there you have it. It's a pretty simple installation. Uh, not the ideal, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, there's no way I'm going to put up a four, 450, 500 foot vertical here. And uh, with this antenna, uh, I've been able to uh, work stations as far away as Europe. My Yaesu FT-DX3000 transceiver won't transmit directly into the 630 meter band. So I need to transmit on the 160 meter band and then down convert that signal to the 630 meter band. I do this by putting the transceiver in split mode where it receives on the 630 meter band but transmits on the 160 meter band. I'm using a signal generator that's locked to a GPS disciplined oscillator as the local oscillator input to my mixer. And I set this signal generator to a frequency that's exactly 474.2 kilohertz below the 160 meter signal coming from the transceiver. This Hewlett Packard down converter originally came with an internal 50 megahertz local oscillator, but that did not give me a lot of flexibility as I would have had to transmit in the six meter band. In order to get more flexibility, I removed the local oscillator and I added a jack on the back so I could inject my own local oscillator frequency for the mixer. The output from the transceiver at five watts first goes through a 30 dB attenuator and then through a 10 dB attenuator in order to reduce that 5 watt signal down to a 0 dBm or 1 milliwatt signal. Additionally, on the output side of the down converter, I have a low pass filter so that the upper mixing product gets removed and only the 630 meter signal remains. The 630 meter signal that leaves the low pass filter goes to this HP instrumentation amplifier to be amplified by 20 dB. That 17 dBm signal then goes through about 150 feet of coaxial cable to the non-directional beacon amplifier. The non-directional beacon transmitter increases this signal up to 25 watts, but with the electrically short antennas mandated by the FCC 
only about 350 milliwatts gets radiated by the antenna. Even so, the efficient digital encoding provided by modes like FST4 and JT9 allow for communication over long distances.